The Lord be with you. I hope, as you're turning in your Bible to the 30th chapter of Deuteronomy, that we're going to do this uh, without the, uh, what I'm going to call the Daniel assist, which is, it's not going to be on the wall. So we're going to, if you know the story of Daniel, you know what I'm talking about. But uh, we'll be doing it in the old uh, onion skin pages here. But I hope uh, every Sunday morning when I say those words, the Lord be with you, I hope you know that those are not just words of rote rhythm or trite tradition, but are words that come from a pastor's heart, and they're sincere to you, and I hope they are sincere back from you as well, for Lord, we need God to be with us. So we are in Deuteronomy chapter 30, and we are going to begin in verse 15 and read through verse 20. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Beginning with verse 15. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today by loving the Lord your God, walking in His ways and observing His commandments, decrees, and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away, and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live. Loving the Lord your God, obeying Him, and holding fast to Him. For that means life to you and length of days, so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. May God bless the reading and hearing of Holy Scripture. Would you pray with me? And now, O God... May we hear with open ears, receptive to your Holy Spirit, the words you would have for us to hear. May they go deep in our souls and stir us to be the people you call us to be. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing unto you, our rock and our redeemer. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, I turn 33 this month. I know the gray hair is starting to show a little more than normal. Um, which means I've been doing this thing here for almost 14 years. Uh, standing in some sort of pulpit somewhere preaching. Uh, if you can't do the math, I started when I was 19 uh, preaching at some point. Uh, I like to think it's gotten better over the years, but uh, some folks may not. I don't know. Um, But in that time, uh, I have stood uh, behind wooden pulpits, I have stood uh, in front of music stands, I have been in auditoriums, I've had nothing in front of me but whatever I was holding. Um, I've been in places with stained glass, I've been in block buildings with aluminum frame windows and all sorts of places. And and I've always stood uh, to preach after hours of prayer and reflection, hours of study from people who are a whole lot smarter than me, uh, listening for what I believe God is going to say. And this morning, uh, I'm going to do something a little different. Uh, Not not totally different. I'm still going to tell you what I think God told me to tell you. Um, But I'm going to do something a little different. In fact, it's so different that I'm hoping we can all beat the Methodists to lunch. Uh, today. In fact, we may even be able to go home and change clothes and beat the Methodist to lunch so we don't get our two-year-old to stain our shirts. Not that any of you have that problem. But what I want to do today is reread the words from Moses and then just make to you a few suggestions. You can leave them in the pew or you can take them with you. But here they are. These words from Moses again from Holy Scripture. I have set before you today life, and my NRSV says prosperity, but the better word is good. I have set before you today life and good, 
death and evil. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today by loving the Lord your God, walking in His ways and observing His commandments, decrees, and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous. And the Lord your God will bless you and the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying Him and holding fast to Him, for that means life to you and length of days, so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. It's a choice that Abraham gives, or I'm sorry, that Moses gives to the people of Israel as they stand waiting to cross into Jordan. And it's a choice actually at the end of a rather long and tedious sermon. I wouldn't advise you go read it. There's probably some other stuff you could read and not fall asleep reading. But he gives them this choice. Life and what is good, death and what is evil. And I'm not here this morning to tell you what is good and what is evil. I've been here with you 40 years. You sat in these pews. You've heard me over and over. I hope you've read your Bible. I hope that you've prayed and you know. So the choice is there. If I say it, if I tell you, I'm afraid what happens is you'll hear me say it and go, ah, uh ah, -huh, no, no. But you know, God speaks to you just in the same way God speaks to me. You know the choice you have, life and good, death and evil. So I just want to make some suggestions to choose life. What does it mean to choose life? It means when we do get out of here and you do go to lunch and you go with your family, recognize that time for what it is, the gift from God to sit at table with family and friends. Choose life. I've heard a lot lately about how folks uh, get disconnected they grow away from people. I've heard people say, you know, we live in the same town and I haven't seen them in 10 years. Change it today. Choose life. Call them up. Find where they live. Don't stalk them. But you know. <coughs> Choose life. That phone number that's been on your refrigerator forever. You haven't called them because you don't know what to say. You don't know what they're going to say on the other end. Call them. Choose life. Had talked to your grandkids in a while? Call them. Choose life. Hadn't heard from your brother. You cut them off a long time ago. Call him. Go see him. Choose life. It's rainy. It's dreary. It's gray outside. Take the kids to the park anyway. Choose life. Or maybe you're like me and you might need a nap today. Go home. Put on your pajamas. Sit in a recliner, sit in the couch, get back in the covers of the bed, turn on your Star Wars movies and watch them all afternoon, and choose life. Choose life. Don't choose the other stuff. The other stuff is easy. Don't go home and turn on the news and listen to all the bad stuff going on in the world. Don't do it. Not today. Don't go home and get on social media and see who's going to make you mad today. Don't do that. Choose life. Choose good. Choose what you know. What you know down in the core of your being is what God would call you to do. Choose it today. And then choose it when you go to lunch, when you come home, before you go to bed tonight. And you can say, today I chose to live. And when you wake up in the morning, when the alarm goes off, when the sun rises, maybe you got one of them old-fashioned ones when the rooster crows. And you wake up, choose it again. Choose life and what is good. You know what it is. The Spirit of God tugs at all of us, and we know what it is. 
All we have to do is choose. Choose life. Choose good. Choose it today. So to help us to get on our way, we're not going to have an invitation. See, that's the different part. Make you a little uneasy. I just want to ask you to stand. That's stand. Maybe I'm not leading the music. Is that what it is? And I want this to be your prayer as you go out from here today. You have two choices set before you today, every single day, with every breath you take, to choose life and what is good, or death and what is evil. Choose life. Choose to do what is good, and you know what it is. God has it there before you. And when you do that, God says he will bless you. He will make your days a blessing to others. And as you go out from this place choosing life and what is good, remember these words. God loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. So, what are you going to do about it? Let's pray. God, go with us from this place with a choice set before us to choose life and what is good or death and what is evil. Help us, God, to always follow you and to choose life and that which is good. In your name we pray. Amen.